So as you guys know, every single week leading up to the launch of MLB The Show 19, San Diego Studio is talking about a new area of the game every single week and kind of breaking it down and letting us know what's new, what's improved, what's changed, so on and so forth. This week, as we saw by the GameStop Monday, they're talking about the brand new mode, March to October. If you guys want to see my breakdown of the March to October video, go ahead and check that out on the channel. It should be the last video that was uploaded, but this video is going to be kind of talking about more of the specifics of this game mode. There were a couple of videos that came out this week as well going over March to October. One of them came out from IGN, the other I believe came out through Game Informer. And in these videos, they gave us our first real look at the gameplay of March to October, kind of like what we're gonna be looking at in menus, how the momentum feature works, so on and so forth. But today, Thursday, March 7th, we actually got the March to October stream and this one talked a little bit about the rewards. That's been a big thing for me. March to October looks like a fun mode, it looks pretty cool, but as a guy who mainly plays Diamond Dynasty and likes to spend a majority of my time, you know, working on my online team, March to October, I'm not totally sure how invested I'll be into it if it's not really gonna be giving me that much incentive for online play. So they did talk about rewards, they talked about the momentum feature, and basically gave us a look at gameplay. That is what we're gonna be talking about in this video. So if you guys are excited for MLB The Show 19, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm covering everything thing as it is coming out. You're not going to want to miss any videos. This is the place to be if you want to be updated on the game. So hit that sub button. But let's go ahead and talk about the rewards. Now, when talking about the rewards, the only thing we really know is that you need an online connection in order to actually claim these rewards. So you can still play March to October offline. You just actually need to have an online connection when you're going to actually get the rewards. The other thing that we know is that the rewards are varied based off the difficulty that you're playing on. So if you're playing on Legend, you're going to get a lot more rewards than you would if you were playing on Rookie. Now, the thing I still don't know is are the rewards going to be, uh, you know, skewed in a way that long shots might get a better overall reward than maybe a favorite or a contender because let's be real if you win the world series on legend with the marlins you should probably get a better reward than if you were to win the world series on legend with the yankees because if the yankees are a favorite they're going to be easier to get that done you're still playing on legend you still got to win the games but the marlins don't really have a lot of guys or the orioles or you know those type of long shot teams so i don't know if the rewards are going to be varied in that way at all. But in the stream, Ramon showed off a possible set of rewards for the Mariners. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right. So speaking of the rewards, uh, we have a slide to show you. So the rewards are still a work in progress. A few things about the rewards. Um, there's A, still a work in progress and B, you can get these rewards in other areas of the game. So the top three rewards, if you win March to October and win the World Series with the Seattle Mariners, you will get the top three rewards. You'll get a universal profile nameplate, you'll get the Seattle Mariners profile icon, and you'll get this rookie uh, version of James Paxton. Let's say you beat Marshall October with the Mariners on Legend, you would also get that 87 Diamond J. Buna card, you get the team specific stadium sound, the train whistle, and you'd also get this 80, um, 83 overall rated 2014 breakout, um, I'm sorry, all-star version of Kyle Seeger. Now again, the rewards are still a work in progress, uh, but that's a shows you a kind of good idea of the different type of yeah. rewards you can get. Now you can also acquire uh, those items in game through other avenues as well. It's not the only way you can acquire them. Right. A few uh, quick notes about the rewards. Yes, if there are stadium sounds that are specific to the team, if you win the World Series, some of the rewards will be sellable. Um, some of them will not be. That's something that Nick and the guys are still working on. We'll probably talk about that uh, in a few weeks. So a couple things to take away from that. Number one, yes, you will be able to get player cards in this March to October mode if you win the World Series. I assume that if you win the World Series on Legend, you will get that high overall diamond card, so that Jay Buhner for the Seattle Mariners. But you may only have to win on Hall of Fame and maybe the Legend reward is the name play. I don't know. Like he said, the rewards aren't final. We don't know which rewards tie into which difficulty, so on and so forth. He also said that some of these rewards will be sellable. Pretty much going to be assuming that the player cards are going to be the ones that are sellable because he did say you can get these through other avenues of the game as well. So I'm kind of assuming that that means you can buy them on the market. But this made me really happy. I really liked that I heard that I could get player cards through playing 
beginning March to October because like I said at the beginning of this video I am more of a Diamond Dynasty centric player. I like online play I like building my team in Diamond Dynasty if you don't enjoy Diamond Dynasty or it's not a mode you play if you play franchise or road to the show these player cards might not entice you very much maybe you want the uh, name player maybe you want the stadium sounds or whatever it is but this is a good way to get these Diamond Dynasty guys kind of more intrigued into a single player mode like March to October if they're still in online incentive to it so I really like the fact that player cards will for sure be rewards in March to October okay next up we're gonna talk a little bit about the momentum feature in March to October so this was something I was a little bit confused on in the GameStop Monday video I wasn't totally sure how exactly momentum affected your team but let's take a look at this clip from the stream and then kind of break it down a little bit so we're gonna jump ahead to the next video and see how this game turned out you can see that we, we came into the game and when we entered the game we were I think down one run we just won the game six to five and so you now let's pause uh, let's pause right here you're gonna see uh, that we got two fire icons for winning and uh, I'll go ahead and let it run um, you'll notice that there's a different amount of, of fire icons you get for winning that's based on what the win expectancy was when you entered the game so if you enter the game behind you stand to gain more if you win you'll lose less if you lose it's the other way around if you enter the game ahead you stand to gain less when you win and lose more when you win. Yeah, that's a really important <coughs> distinction about m2 it's not just if you win or if you lose it's how you win and how you lose and what the expectation was going into that game right exactly so you can see that the momentum you just earned got applied to your team momentum and as we go to sim the next few games that you can see that that momentum you earned is impacting what's happened next so you just beat the red sox we just beat the Red Sox the first two games of the series. A new episode triggers. We go back to the home screen and we see up in the upper right corner there, we're, we're having an opportunity to sweep the World Series champs in their house. Uh, this is a great example of the mode working the way we wanted it to because that's a, that's, a that's a big moment you know, for a team. You can, you can imagine that that would be a momentum swinging you know, event should they be able to pull that off. Projected wings. All right, now we've skipped ahead. We've skipped ahead a few more days. You can see from the spike of the green that it looks like we, we beat the Red Sox, swept them, got a little momentum. So we've, we're now tied for the division lead. And the next episode that's triggered is an episode against the Minnesota Twins, who we're in a tie for the division for. We're behind in that game. And it looks like, yeah, so the episode basically is keep the win streak alive. So we're trailing. We got to try to come from behind. Let's go ahead and uh, enter that game. Away. So we've got it tied in the bottom of the ninth here. Walk off time. Here's Look out. Swing and it goes. He got all of this one. All right. So we just walked off the Twins to not only win the game but take the division lead. So let's notice as the as the results come up. Wait just another second. Here, let's pause, pause right now. So you can see. We got five icons just for winning the game, and that's because we were trailing mm -hmm. coming into the game. Uh, now you also got a bonus fire icon because it was a walk-off win. And I'll just make a point here. There are a number of different ways you can earn a bonus. Yeah. So it's not just that you win the game. It's, it's how you win, it's it, right? how you win the game. Um, the, the, the lead or deficit entering in the game, and then how you win, if you, if you get a walk-off win, if you get a walk-off loss, you're gonna get a, you're gonna, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll see that later. Um, if, you, if you complete a shutout, uh, there are different ways. Also, if you, if, if you ended up blowing the game open, and winning by like six or seven runs, uh, you're gonna get another little extra bonus for that. So it's a reason to keep playing you know, your best. Um, because the, the more fire icons you earn, the bigger, well, we'll see in a second here. Let's go ahead and look at it. I think we're going to have the White Sox pretty much to the maximum uh, positive momentum possible here. So we get back to the, also you notice, the. Well, yeah, so we're back here. That's like the maximum possible momentum. Let's see what happens with that. That's going to definitely cause some wins to get reeled off. Um, something I'll mention. Uh, momentum does not guarantee wins. wins. Yeah. The bigger it is, the more likely it is you'll win. 
but you're gonna see losses too. All right, I know that was kind of a long clip, but I wanted to make sure all the information was explained to you guys. So the momentum is basically a reflection of how you actually uh, played in your opportunities. Because remember, you're not playing the full 162 game season. You're going through a full 162 game season, but you're only playing the key moments. So if you don't play good in the key moments, you're gonna get bad momentum. It's gonna be harder for you to win those simulated games. If you have the good momentum, you have a way higher chance of actually winning those simulated games. I really like that momentum is kind of stackable as well, and it all is situational. You know, if you go into a game that you are expected to lose, and you end up winning that game, that's a big momentum boost. It makes sense that you would get a lot more momentum out of that. And if you think about it, if you're playing with teams like the Marlins or the Orioles, those long shot teams, you're gonna have a lot of different opportunities where you're not expected to win that game. So the opportunity for a ton of momentum shifts is actually gonna be pretty common for those long shot teams. And I think that's a good way to balance out the game mode because a team like the Red Sox or a team like the Astros or the Yankees, they are gonna be expected to win more the games that they play so the momentum might not be stacked as hard in their favor versus a long shot team okay so one more thing we're going to talk about in this video we are going to talk about a trade opportunity so once again i'm gonna let the clip play and then i'll break it down for you guys win. oh that's a win loss ah so trade so tell us about trade episodes john yeah okay so we're in the middle of the season i think we're probably a couple weeks before the trade deadline here and uh, this is the first time the screen pops up with an opportunity to uh, make a trade to improve our team. Um, now, which we need to because if I keep swinging the way I am, like we need some help. Yeah. Here. So you can see we've been presented with uh, three players to choose between, or the fourth choice is not interested in a trade at this time. And just to let you know, if you make that choice, a few days later, this will happen again, uh, and it might be one or more of the same guys, but often it's, a, it's different players that are available. So let's take a look here. So what if, I, what if I'm not like quite sure about my team? Like, well, exactly. I, need to, I need to go ahead and So see. you can see at the bottom there, it says toggle lineup, if you hit square. And we can take a look at our lineup and see what our team needs might be, okay? Right away I'm looking to see, I, I, first thing I notice is I'm gonna look at the overall values. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say we've got a, an 85 center fielder and an 86 shortstop available there. And I'm gonna look at my lineup. I'm we're not say, looking okay, too good at shortstop. We're, we're, in, we're already solid at uh, center fielder. We're, we're not so great at, we're okay, but not, not great at shortstop. And another possibility is if you see that Billy Hamilton can also play left field or right field. Mm -hmm. We're good in the corner outfield. Yeah. We're, we Simmons. Are. Right. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I mean, I'll tell you from, from designing the mode and playing it, you're not gonna get much better opportunity than, than, than Simmons the at Simmons shortstop trade. right there. So I probably would take that trade. Yeah, so what bat. are we trading away here? Should we vote? Should we have, should we ask? Should we have the, a vote? Because we're gonna play the next episode. Should we make this Simmons trade? Pull up Simmons' as Yeah, we can, either, we can either take Simmons or we can say not interested if we, if we want it and we can see what came up next time. Should we make this trade? Let's say yes or no. Do we want to? Do we want to make the yeah. trade for Simmons here or not? Seeing some yeses. Simmons, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's, so we're a, I think that's an obvious Simmons. one. Yeah. yeah. I think that's kind of a no-brainer. We'll see you later, Ken Gatto. So if we accept this trade, will there be another opportunity? No. You 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 get one. Uh, you get to trade for one player. One emergency. And so trade yeah. Player. So knowing that, uh, if you don't love your choices, I would recommend you say not interested in the trade at this time and you're gonna get at least three or four chances before the trade deadline. Okay, so the trading thing seems kind of interesting because you only get to trade for one player. Now, they did say that at the end of your March to October session, whichever team you're using, if you enjoyed playing with that team, you can go ahead and carry that specific team into a franchise mode and start the next season in 2020 and then play on from there. So whatever trade you made in March to October would also be happening in the franchise mode. It would be reflected in there as well. But if you're just playing March to October to get the rewards at the end, I don't really see why you wouldn't trade or get the best possible option from any of the trades. I mean, if you can make your team better, the goal is to win the World Series that year. So you pretty much should always be taking these trades, in my opinion. The thing that's interesting is that these trades are going to be kind of given to you. You're not going to be able to go and see like, hey, I kind of want to trade for Mike Trout or I kind of want to trade for this guy. They're going to give you the options that you could trade for because they said this is still somewhat of a challenge mode. That's why the rosters are going to be locked once the opening day rosters come into play. So even if a 
big trade happens in real life, it will not be reflected in March to October because they'd have to rearrange the long shots and, uh, you know, underdogs, seeds, and all that stuff. So the trading seems kind of interesting. If you don't like the trade, you can say no. You might get another opportunity later. But overall, the March to October mode offers, I think, a really fun way to experience an MLB season. I'm looking forward to the mode. I hope the rewards are going to be really good. Once I see what all the rewards are, then I might be a little bit more open to playing a specific team's run or whatever, but we'll just have to wait and see. But down in the comments, guys, let me know what you think about March to October. Are you going to be playing this mode? Are you going to be avoiding it? Let me know your thoughts down there. Anyway, guys, drop a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. Like I said earlier, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and you want to keep up with MLB The Show 19. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.